a very good morning and welcome to what is a dreadful, dreadful day here in Manchester. But hey ho, let's move along. I hope I find you all very well. I'm sorry I've been around for um, a couple of days over the weekend. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. One we all know about. And the other one, this time of year, um, I do get very busy, unfortunately. So there will be a, a few little gaps in my uh, video making. Um, through December, but I will keep you up to speed on when and why I'm disappearing. Um, what I want to talk about today is to fulfil uh, a little promise uh, that I made uh, a few weeks ago when I bought my, le my latest watch, the uh, Rolex Hulk, um, which is just to tell you uh, how it's been living with it uh, over the last month since I bought it and what my uh, opinions are. Well, dreadful, awful, the most bad investment anyone can make. Really? No, not really. Um, let's kind of start from the beginning. Um, this watch was always going to be special. Um, not because it was a Rolex, not even because it was green, um, but it was a, a fulfillment of a promise to myself. And there's nothing finer than, than, than holding good to a promise, whether that promise uh, is to somebody else, a friend or a family member, or to yourself. And occasionally, I do think we all deserve to make little promises to ourselves to make our lives better. Um, so, as we know, I've owned this for about a month now. Um, there she is, reflecting the light as always through my window. Unfortunately, very little I can do about that. Um, freshly polished this morning, I've got it nice and clean to make this video, um, just so it looked its best for you guys and girls. Now, um, I'm going to try and make this very personal, if I can. Um, not to teach you to suck eggs, because you all know enough um, about this particular watch and about how good Rolex are and so on and so forth. So let's give you my little insights. Before I bought the watch... Um, a lot of people were saying to me, certainly in comment sections, and uh, I don't go in, in, in forums that often, but occasionally I did when I was looking for this, and just kind of watching what the threads were about this particular watch. And what a lot of people said was that the um, with the Maxi case, uh, people were worried about the shoulders, that they were, uh, one, a little bit big, and they dug into your wrist, making it a little bit sore. Two, that it made the watch look a little bit ungainly, I probably guess is the uh, the best possible term I can use. Um, that three, that it took something away from the overall aesthetic of the watch. Well, uh, let me give you my take on that. Um, I've worn this and my GMT back to back, just really as to give myself a little bit of an insight on what people might have trying to be getting at. Now, you bear in mind that, all right, there's not been any major changes in Rolex, certainly the Subby range and the GMT range, for many, many years. Um, my GMT, <coughs> circa 1969, looks more or less the same as this. Agreed? Um, and I found that the shoulders on my GMT and the shoulders on the Hulk are or make never no mind of a difference to me because they are both uh, in proportion to the watch and in proportion to current trends. Just bear with me. Now, if I put both of them together, Hopefully you will see what I mean. Now if you look at those, and bear in mind, these are, what, 50 years apart, give or take, a little bit. You can look at the shoulders, and you can see that, in my opinion, for what my opinion is worth, there's not a hell of a whole lot of difference. I think that the shoulders um, are where the lugs on the Hulk are concerned, are a little bit more angular, they are potentially a little sharper, they are certainly a little wider, but does that make any difference? Well, 
If you are a person of a small wrist, uh, let's say you have a six and a half inch wrist, maybe, um, potentially, yes, this could wear very, very big. Um, to use a term from across the pond, uh, it will take up a lot of wrist real estate. Um, but anything above that, so seven inch, seven and a half inch, eight inch like me and if you're any bigger than that this will trouble you not not at all so these bad boys which were one of the concerns i read about before buying it i've found that it is not a concern so if you are in the market for a hulk or anything out of the rolex subby range that has the maxi case and that is holding you back don't let it it is, um, it wears well, it wears squarely. And for me, with if you have a decent wrist size, so when I say decent, seven inches or above, you will have no problems at all with this particular watch. How have I found it to wear? Um, the answer is a delight, an absolute delight. Now I know that that is uh, tempered because of my um, delight in buying it after saving so long for it um, but even if I had uh, a shed load of money and buying something like this hadn't been such a, um, a long-term project I would still have found it a delight um, and it's a delight for a number of reasons <clears throat> let me tell you the most practical of those reasons <clears throat> and the most practical of those reasons is the adjustment this little thing here, where you can move it back and forth. So, look at that. I mean, that is just stunning. It's got your little ratcheted steps inside the clasp, and you just move it along. Now, that must give you, I would wager, about three quarters of a centimetre of adjustment, so about seven and a half mil. Now, under normal circumstance, if you buy a watch and it has a bracelet and it's too big, of course, you've got to go and take a link out or have a link taken out and have a half link put in, for instance. Um, if it's anything like Rolex, of course, you don't get a half link sent with you. In fact, you get no links sent with you. And if you do normally get links sent, then I've been done. And let me know. Um, so that little adjustment there, which is to all intents and purposes, I guess, a dive suit extender because it will possibly work that way as well so instead of having a micro adjuster and a dive suit extender you've got the two in one because again if you are of a smaller wrist size a seven inch and you've got a wetsuit on this this little thing here as I've shown you will allow you to extend it enough to put it over your wetsuit so double bubble it's a great deal um, I love it for that. It is a smashing, smashing little innovation um, that Rolex come up with. And I know all the other major brands are following suit with their versions. I know that um, Omega has their push system, which is a similar thing. Um, it is common sense. Why have they not done it before? Not too sure. Have they held it back um, because they knew they could use it as a, um, a marketing tool? At some point in the future therefore pulling guys like you and me in to buy a new watch um, obviously you guys know why I bought this for the color it is beautiful it is gorgeous and I am perfectly completely and totally enraptured by the green I love it to bits I think it's wonderful I think it is amazing how it changes from the blackest of blacks, basically making it the uh, original anniversary sub, the Kermit, to what it is when it's in broad daylight and you hit that sweet spot where that dial changes from this dark fern green that you can see at a minute to this bright, resilient, effervescent green that you see on the brightest of sunny days. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. The beautiful ceramic bezel is a joy an absolute joy and the loom is 
wonderful. It is this beautiful blurry white loom that lasts a good couple of hours. Um, I took this to uh, the cinema the other day. I went to see Spectre. I will be doing a video on that. Um, and it lasted uh, not all the way through the film. But then again, the watch was under the under a cuff because it was a very nasty day weather-wise um, when I went to see the film. So it didn't get a lot of daylight, but nevertheless, in the short time of me being in an illuminated area when I took my coat off, it gained some loom and, and it stayed shining relatively bright for about 45 to 50 minutes. So not a bad little uh, uh, exhibition of the, the loom capacity on this watch. Why I like how it wears? Well, the reason I like how it wears is because of how this wears. Um, so many watches now, of course, are very, very thick. And as we were aware, when I was looking at buying watches, I was looking at the Omega Good Planet. And I loved it to pieces. In fact, I still love it to pieces. And it's still calling to me. Not quite as loudly as it did, but still is. But huge, about 16 mil. Massive, absolutely massive. And will stand proud um, no matter what you're wearing. And would you get it under a dress shirt cuff? I'm not sure, especially if you were wearing perhaps uh, a double button cuff with cuff links, maybe. That was the only way you could perhaps get away with that watch. But if you compare my GMT width to the width of the Hulk... I'll try and put them side by side for you. See, now my GMT is slimmer. Yes, it is. But not by much. And you can actually see the differential in actual size of the watch when they're kind of side by side. But again, not by much. So that's the reason I love this watch, how it wears. It wears, dare I say, very similar to a watch that's nearly 50 years old. So to a certain extent, it's kind of booked the trend of these watches getting bigger and thicker and fatter and heavier and so on and so forth. So I like that about it. Um, the Oyster Bracelet is um, very nice. Um... Am I reluctant in saying that? I, I, you know, I kind of am, and I'm sorry you Rolex died in the wool fans out there. It's lovely, but it's, but it's not the bracelet that I have on my Omega 300. And I've said before, the Omega 300 professional bracelet, in my view, is by far the best, the most comfortable, the most well constructed bracelet on any watch. In the last, certainly the last 25 years, by a fairly long chalk. Um, but this is such a standard now that if this watch came on anything else, I think it would be frowned upon. So, again, tradition, a very, very powerful thing, and I understand why they've stayed with this. So why is this watch so good? Well, um, I'm not a um, complete Rolex fanboy. I'm not an anything complete fanboy, as you know. This watch is so good because, uh, as any Rolex fan will tell you, you can, you can take this anywhere, in any situation, at any time of day, any time of night, any social gathering, and it will just look right. It will suit as a sports watch. It will, if you strap tanks on your back and go actually diving, it is made for that. If you're sat lazing in a pool on a cruise ship, it will deal with that. And then in the evening, when you've been at the pool all day on your cruise ship and you've gone back to your cabin and you've showered and changed and got your dinner suit on to go and eat at the captain's table, it will carry that off as well. Um, so it is a Swiss Army pen knife watch as it were it will suit anywhere and people will know that when they see what you have on your wrist that you have a fair idea what you're talking about where watches are concerned and what you should go out there and buy um, the big selling point for me for this watch wasn't 
that in my opinion uh, it's going to be a rare rare animal um, when I first got it I said that you don't see many when you see them in a shop window they disappear very quickly I haven't seen many on people's wrists I'm as guilty as you guys I um, always have a quick sly look at people's wrists when I'm out shopping or whatever to see what they've got and I've not seen one yet um, you're not going to see many uh, coming up for resale unless of course uh, life hits the previous buyer very very hard and they have to liquidate their assets um, I don't care if it's, this is going to be a future classic uh, because I bought it for one reason and one reason only the colour um, the slight secondary reason is to fulfil the promise and the very third but distant third is because I had the money to buy it uh, I could have bought something else for the same kind of money uh, but the something else would have been either a blue dial, black dial or a silver dial um, and I didn't want to go down that route so um, should you buy one? if you have a yearning for a sub and if you have a yearn for a little bit of colour in your watch collection because you're a little bit bored of all the blacks and the silvers and the whites and the blues that every and all manufacturers do then yes absolutely are you going to be disappointed in it not at all absolutely not um, if anybody buys one of these and they strap it on their wrist and they it lives on their wrist for a fortnight you will be as delighted with it as the day that you took it out of the box um, I've been told recently that one of my subscribers has pulled the trigger on one um, I'm delighted for him and I'm sure that he will be as overjoyed with his purchase um, as this one uh, as this one brought my my joy to me when I bought it a month ago um, it is a, a delight to wear uh, I've not reopened resized it so a little bit, bit wobbly but it looks great on the wrist it wears well, it wears beautifully, and it is probably um, one of the nicest watches that I own. Not because it's a Rolex, no, just because of how it looks and how it feels. It is one of my partner's favourite watches um, that I own. And if you're sensible, as a married man, um, take into consideration when you're buying these little magnificent machines what your partner thinks because a happy life is a happy wife uh, and she loves this she bought it yes she thought it was a lot of money but now she's got over the shock of what i spent she loves it she thinks it's delightful and she is delighted every time i wear it solely on the basis that she knew what joy i got from wearing this and I now have one of my own so there they are the both of them so the Rolex Hulk in summing it up um, it has been one of my most hard fought purchases it has been one of my most delightful purchases I have enjoyed telling you guys that if you are in the market for a new watch anything and everything positive that you may have heard about iconic watches in Blackburn believe um, if you are not in the UK or in parts of the UK where you can't travel to Blackburn deal with them online email them telephone them and conduct the transaction online and you will find you will receive the same level of courteous professional friendly service that I got face to face um, am I glad I bought it yes absolutely um, why wouldn't I be um, it is a watch which will if I had no other watch and I know I've said this about a couple of other things that I own but if I had no other watch this one would live quite happily with anything else if I wandered into a room of Patek wearers this would hold its own if I wandered uh, into a room full of Breguet wearers this would hold its own if I wandered into a room full of Daytona wearers platinum 
cased Daytona Whereas, this would hold its own. So the Rolex Hulk, it is a tool watch um, made from tool steel, as I said in my 904L versus 316L stainless steel video. It is a tool watch. It is built to do a job. And the job that this watch can do is any job. Any job at all. Wear it slobbing around. Wear it on holiday. Wear it in the sea. Wear it at the poshest dinner table with the poshest dinner suit. And you will not be looked down on for owning this particular piece. And if you're going to buy a sub, buy one of these. Because it, the green of this, the way this looks, makes the black dial look commonplace. So the Rolex Hulk, can I recommend it? Yes, absolutely. Is it expensive? Yes, absolutely. Do not get yourself in hock for buying this, no matter how nice I say it is. Do what I did. Save up, save up and save up. And treasure the feeling of buying it in cash. And it will make your life a lot nicer. This is a brilliant, brilliant watch. And I hope you like my little review of owning it for a month. It has got so many pros and very, very few cons apart from the price. Sorry, guys. We can do nothing about that, can we? So there she is. The Hulk. Absolutely gorgeous. I love wearing it. I will love wearing it until, well, I pass it along until somebody else becomes the custodian of this fine, fine timepiece. Let me know what you think. If you recently have bought one and you're finding, you know, maybe you've had it a fortnight and you're thinking, God, I love this. Is it just me? Is it just me that loves it? It isn't. It isn't just me. There's me as well. That's two of us. So there must be more of us. If there's you and me, there's more of us. Um, let me know what you think about this. If there's any questions that I've not covered, let me know. Drop them down below as always. Queries, suggestions for this kind of nonsense. I will uh, look forward to hearing from all of you. Um, thank you very much for my few new subscribers that have arrived whilst I've been away. Check them out this morning. Lovely. Great to have you along. I will hopefully keep you entertained. Um, also, thank you very much for all the responses to my checking in video. Um, I've had a few suggestions. I will uh, have made a note of them and I will uh, make videos about those little suggestions. Um, definitely not doing a nudity. Sorry. No. Um, but other than that, that's it for this one. Uh, if you've liked this video and you found it a little bit entertaining or more importantly, a little bit informative about this little baby here, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like this video, then give it a thumbs down. It doesn't matter. My loyal fans will counteract it anyway. So for now, that's it. And if you feel as though you might enjoy carrying on watching this kind of nonsense, feel free to subscribe. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.